This guide will attempt to describe, in detail, the tactics involved in breaching a building and fighting in close quarters. In my previous guide on base defense, I made the point that I wasn't trying to tell you how you should play Project Zomboid. I was just laying out some options for you to consider. In this video, I instead go deep into the this is how you should do things territory. Even then, you don't have to take all of my advice, and it won't even be practical depending on your sandbox and mod settings. In any case, I hope you enjoy the video and find something new to add to your toolkit. If you do enjoy the video, consider subscribing to the channel and checking out my other Zomboid guides and gameplay. Okay, so you're out in the street and you're sizing up a building you want to loot. Time to get in there? Whoa, not so fast, kiddo. Before you mosey on over and start kicking in doors, you should take a moment to size up your situation. Are you short on water or food? Is it getting dark soon? Is your weapon about to break? Are you injured or in some other way not ready for a brawl? All these questions and more really boil down to two big ones. Am I on the clock? And am I ready for a fight? For the most part, I'm going to assume you're not on the clock. So you've got the luxury of taking your time and aborting if things go pear-shaped. If, on the other hand, you've got zombies on your tail, but you really need to get in that house to fill up your water bottle, then you're going to have to find your own compromise on the fly between speed and safety. Okay, so now you're ready to approach the building and head inside. And wrong. Before entering any building, you should circle the perimeter. Although, this will be impractical for the very largest of buildings. As you circle a building, you're keeping an eye out for nearby packs of zombies on the street, but you're also watching for sneaky zombies sitting along the edge of buildings and fences. These guys can be surprisingly heedless of your presence, making them actually more dangerous, as you might assume the area is clear, then round a corner into a whole bunch of them. Now that you've circled the building and cleared any zombies you feel were too close, it's time to turn your attention to the building itself. One reasonable option is to smash a window as soon as possible, for no other reason than to test whether the house has an active alarm or not. Note that under normal sandbox settings, zombies can be moving around inside a building just fine without triggering an alarm, and can even break windows without setting one off. If the house is alarmed, you're probably going to have to retreat anyway, so you may as well get that out of the way. House alarms summon things from an enormous distance, probably way further than you think. And it's far enough that even after the house alarm finishes going off, you're still going to have possibly hundreds of zombies slowly making their way to you. Of course, that's assuming you're playing with shamblers. If you happen to be playing with sprinters, then when that house alarm goes off, you damn well better have a car waiting for you. If you do get a house alarm, one option that presents itself is to run wildly up and down the street, smashing or even shooting out windows to trigger any remaining house alarms in the area. It's not like having two house alarms going off is going to make your day any worse, and once they're triggered, you never have to worry about them again. Back to the building we're looking to loot. The zombie spawn mechanic in Project Zomboid is such that the zombies that will appear inside a building do not exist until you actually look inside the building. In most cases, you can just spawn the zombies in a house by peeking through any of its windows, even from the safety of a car. Now that you've actually gotten the zombies to spawn inside a building, you're going to have to kill them. The best way to fight in a building is DON'T FIGHT IN A BUILDING. In Project Zomboid, your last line of defense against the zombie horde is giving it a jolly good walking away from, or in the case of sprinters, a running away from. This ultimate backup plan is jeopardized by the tight confines of a building. For any building up to and including a two or three story mansion, your goal should be to lure almost all of the zombies outside. This means you don't want a stealthy approach. I'm not saying you need to shoot off fireworks or anything, but actually if you could get away with that, that would be best. The thing is, the zombies that know you're there tend to be easy to find. They're the ones moving around and banging on doors and windows. If a zombie is banging on a window, it means it isn't standing silently beside it, waiting to take a bite out of you as you come through. In a hot zone, the best you might manage is to whisper outside a window or door before you go inside. But given the choice, my preference is to blast a car horn on the front lawn and really wake the dead. Once the zombies start coming out of the woodwork to kill you, you need to kill them first. Killing things as they pour out windows is quick and easy. Though there's a little nuance to it, which I will cover here. Zombies are extremely vulnerable to melee and firearm attacks while on the ground. You also have a window of opportunity, no pun intended, to kill them before they can retaliate. When there is a zombie on the floor in front of you, your character will usually direct attacks at it. But if there is a zombie nearby that isn't on the ground, your dude can get mighty confused and will sometimes just whiff swings uselessly into the air, giving the zombie time to strike. If you don't kill a zombie in time, they can do what's called a fence lunge, and this can be incredibly dangerous. Not only can it scratch or lacerate you, which on its own is enough to infect you with knocks, 
the attack will send your character reeling and make you lose control of them for a short while. It doesn't last long, but it's long enough to send you spinning gracefully into the arms of another waiting zombie who's only too happy to take a bite out of you. There's two things you can do to turn window slash fence fighting from a high risk reward situation into something more reliable. First, stand with your back to the window. The zombies inside will need to climb through the window, pouring over and through you, ending up in front of you on the floor. This requires some good nerves, as you're intentionally putting enemies behind you and losing sight of how many of them there are. When it comes time to strike the zombies, you have a manual floor attack button in your key bindings. If you hold this button down, 100% of your attacks will be directed at the ground. At present, if you hold the ground attack button and hold your stomp button, rather than stomp, your character will go batshit, delivering a furious rain of blows down upon the ground with their melee weapon. To get into a house, you're almost certainly going to be using a door or a window. The door is a little safer if it's unlocked, though locked doors are pretty common. As to windows, you can try to force them open, but if that fails, you may need to smash your way in. You can break a window with a right-click menu option, or just by attacking it. Smashing a window with a melee weapon or a gun in your hand will never hurt you, whereas doing so empty-handed will always hurt you, sometimes quite significantly. Be sure to remove the broken glass from the window before you try to climb through it. I try to remove any broken glass from windows, just in case I have to use that window in a hurry, but this can take a while. So, now that you're finally inside, you probably want to start grabbing whatever isn't nailed down. Maybe don't do this. No matter how carefully you've been up to this point, there might still be zombies in the house, and you should absolutely assume there is until you've cleared the building one room at a time. Before anything else though, I'd give some thought on how you're getting out. Some buildings have a few points of entry, and you want to have at least one backup in mind. If there are any zombies in the building, you'll probably hear them before you see them. But that doesn't mean they won't still get the jump on you if you're not careful. And even if you don't hear anything, you should still tread lightly. When approaching a door, if it's rattling, there's a zombie behind it, obviously. Here's something you might not know. A single zombie cannot break down a world-generated door, no matter how long he beats on it. This means if you've made some noise and taken your time to get inside, any groups of zombies will have broken their way out of the rooms, while any lone zombie will still be trapped inside. This is the best reason to not sneak quietly into buildings, as doing so makes it way more likely to open up a door and find eight zombies having a staff meeting. When opening doors, the standard technique is the door flash. You double tap E to open and close the door in an instant. This will give you a momentary glimpse of the room, and even for zombies waiting inside ready to lunge, the door should slam shut in its face. Even when you've fought your way into a room and it looks clear, take the time to make sure. If there's a single tile of the room that's out of your line of sight, then there is a small chance that a zombie is standing there, even if you've been banging the drum. Pay special attention to line of sight blocking furniture, such as the common wardrobe. It looks like you should be able to see this tile, but in fact, you won't have line of sight until you angle all the way around. Sure, there isn't likely to be a zombie there, but do you want to risk your life? or worse, your 90 day character's life? The single most dangerous place in a building is the top of a staircase. The moment when you transition from one floor to the next, your vision suddenly changes to the new scene, and if there's a zombie waiting for you, it can be mid-lunch. This is yet another reason why sneaking through a building can actually be counterproductive. If you've been making plenty of noise, a zombie upstairs probably came downstairs to investigate. When in doubt, just keep your guard up as you ascend the stairs. For larger buildings, where fighting inside is going to be inevitable, I recommend you consider some defensive strategies to go with your offense. A table can be quickly moved to block off a hallway and to secure your flank before you go into another room. You can set up furniture to fight across, or even build your own low fences as you lure zombies from deeper into the building into your kill box. Once you're off the ground floor, removing sections of the floor will create obstacles zombies cannot overcome, though you should try not to fall down. It is possible to set up a generator outside a building, on a balcony, or even on its roof, and to temporarily fire up all the lights in the building. Unfortunately for residential blocks, you're going to be trying to power every fridge and freezer in the building, which will drain even a full generator within a single day. Still, this can be a lot better than stumbling about in the dark. Once you've cleared the house, or as much of the larger building as you want to bite off, then it's time to loot. Before you do, keep in mind how you're going to leave the area. Are you running loot back to a nearby base, or to a car waiting outside, or are you carrying everything you own on your back? If it's the latter, then you've got to be judicious in what you take, and you don't want to head back out on the mean streets struggling under a huge load. If, on the other hand, you're taking stuff out to a car, then I might suggest you don't bother putting it in your backpack. It takes the same amount of time to put an item into a bag as your inventory, 
but it takes a significant amount of time to retrieve an item from your bag. So in this case, it's gonna be better to miss out on the backpack's weight reduction to instead save precious looting time and to not need to stand out on the road unloading things for so long. If you find yourself dumping multiple armloads of loot into a car, then I may suggest you use the game's transfer all button and its favorite system. You can tag items in your inventory as favorite, and then when you hit the transfer all button, you'll unload everything else into whatever container you're pointed at. Another looting option is to carry a bag in one hand, fill it with loot, and then dump the whole thing off in your car. I find this is useful for clearing out gun stores or supermarkets. You can even rename the bag for extra organization. I am extremely reluctant to run around with bags in my hands, but if you're without a car and you're running things back to a nearby base, this is at least an option for you to consider. Note that you can climb a sheet rope like this, but you will dump the bags if you try to climb a tall fence, and you really don't want to get into a fight with your hands full. As advice for the actual looting, keep your ears open, and if possible, keep your eyes on the most likely point of zombie attack while you're working. Unless you've really swept the streets clean, the longer you take, the more chance some fresh zombies will wander in, so don't take all day. Before you leave the house, it's a good idea to update your in-game map, provided you're carrying something to write with. You can mark a house as cleared, or cleared and looted. I've even at times marked which houses I've stolen all the windows from. Marking a map like this can be genuinely helpful later on, plus it's nice to watch your work grow over time. Note that if the area isn't 100% clear, you can pause the game with F2 while you update your map. In addition to marking a map, I like to leave a sheet rope hanging from one of the windows of a house, wherever practical. It doesn't take long to hammer a single board over a door upstairs, or block off the top of a staircase with a chair lock, and while I wouldn't go so far as to call this a safe house, you've at least got a semi-secure place where you can limp back to and die peacefully if something's gone wrong. Speaking about windows, and dying, remember you can jump out of windows. If, while looting a multi-story building, the ground floor gets swarmed by zombies, this may be your best bet. So long as you're unencumbered, leaping from a second story window is usually okay, but you should expect an injury from a third story window, and you should expect to die from anything above that. Carrying a heavy load makes this all much, much worse, and even a simple door between you and a horde should hold long enough to quickly drop that spare bag or transfer all a bunch of stuff out of your main inventory before you take the plunge. I'm Kyle Middleton, and I hope you found this guide entertaining and or useful. If you did, give it a like, maybe leave a nice comment, and you go have a great day.